Okay, so hello everybody. Welcome to Bravo Plant Based Channel. Uh, today um, I am going to be showing you my carrot ginger soup. That's what we're going to be making today. I have myself uh, a great uh, group of uh, ladies here who are going to help me cheer and watch and um, ask a lot of great questions. So I hope you enjoy this. The reason I'm showing this recipe in particular is because um, it is a great example of how to layer flavors. The number one job for a chef is to make something taste good. Whether he's a steak and potato guy or whether he or she is a kale salad chef, okay? If it doesn't taste good, there is no use for it. Because if it doesn't taste good, you know and I know that. You won't eat it. You won't eat it, exactly, okay? so. Number one job, make it taste good, otherwise there's no use for it. So, this particular recipe, carrot ginger soup, shows a good example of how to layer flavors so that with that salt we can still get a really good amount of flavor within the dish. Sound good? Mm -hmm. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to preheat my pot, okay? What that means is that when I add my ingredients, I want them to start searing like right away kind of a thing, all right? So this is a medium high heat that I have on my pot, okay? And it takes about a minute, minute and a half. How you know this is ready is you put your hand over it, okay? And you wanna feel the radiating heat in there. You definitely don't wanna touch it, okay? Uh, but it's kinda like if you've ever um, put anything on a grill, you know that the grill has to be hot before you start adding things to it. And so what you'll do is like, you know, sort of feel the, the grill to make sure that it's hot. Have a little bit of steam coming because there was a little bit of water there at the bottom. So, okay. In here, I have some um, diced carrots, okay. And over here, I have my mixture of onions, celery, shallots, and leeks. That's what I have there. Check my pot again, almost there. In here, what I have, uh, you'll see when I add it, this is my um, carrot juice, okay? This is something that if you go to like a um, Whole Foods, uh, Sprouts, maybe even like Safeway, uh, they will have some carrot juice. If you have your own juicer at home, then all you need is carrots, okay? Here we do a lot of juices for all sorts of uh, people here. So we have the advantage of just grabbing a handful of carrots and making carrot juice really quick. Okay. So now. Can we make the carrot, instead of carrot juice, can we make, um, include pulp and just put it in the vitamin? Uh, you could, um, but I'll, I'll get to that point in, just a, in okay. just a second. So the question was, can we just, make a carrot smoothie and a Vitamix and then add that in. Um, I will answer that in just a bit. Okay, so my carrots go in. I don't know if you can hear it, ladies, but there's that sizzle yeah. going on. Okay, so that's what I'm looking for. What that means is that as soon as the carrots hit that pot, the natural sugars within those carrots are already caramelized, okay? So now I add the rest of my stuff. Onions, leeks, shallots, and celery. Got so let me see if I find one here real quick. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so for you guys watching on the computer, there's that. And so within a few seconds, I'm already, you know, browning my my carrots, and that's what I'm looking for. So, <clears throat> there are two things I'm trying to do in this pot at the moment. Number one is, I already talked about it, I'm trying to caramelize those natural sugars so that I am <clears throat> sort of roasting the carrots in the pot. The second is, you can see it a little bit now, but you'll see a little bit more is, <clears throat> you see the steam sort of coming up? I'm also getting rid of the water within those, within these vegetables, within the carrots and the onions and the leaves. So 
I am roasting the vegetables, okay? And then I'm also dehydrating them in a way, okay? So I'm evaporating the moisture. What does water taste like? Nothing. Nothing, okay. So the water here that I'm getting, getting rid of doesn't do me any favors if I keep it, okay? So it's essentially I'm concentrating the flavor of the vegetables. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. So now you can see that evaporation happening a, a little bit more. So you're not burning the pot. You're not burning the pot. The, I am not burning the pot, no. So what happens is as that water does escape, it's escaping from the ones at the top as well as the ones at the bottom. But the ones on the bottom do hit that bottom of the pot, so it's sort of cooling it down at the same time. This is essentially what I like to call a dry saute, okay? I heated up, preheated the pot or the pan, I added my vegetables dry, and now I'm sort of pan roasting them in a, in a way. And a lot of people think, well, in order to cook, you need to have some oil. In order to saute, you have to have a little bit of oil, butter, um, peanut oil, olive oil, duck fat, any sort of something else. Matter of fact, if you look at the description of um, the meaning of the word saute in a dictionary, I think almost word for word it'll say to cook something in a little bit of hot fat. Okay. That is the definition of sauteing. So we're doing exactly that minus the hot fat, okay? And it does not mean that it's going to stick. It does not mean that it's going to burn. It's not going to explode or melt or anything like that, okay? So now, what will happen is as the vegetables and the carrots and the celery and all that start to release more and more of the moisture. You go from sort of that instant sear as it hits the pot to a short period of they're sort of boiling because so much liquid has been released. So then it dries up again and then it starts to pan roast again. Yes. Do you um, prefer the meat on top um, style to keep or the question is, do I prefer having everything right there? Yes, that is, I would prefer that. Um, but a lot of times that's just not possible. Um, a lot of times if you're at home, your mise en place means the whole kitchen because you're trying to figure out what's in the fridge, what's in the pantry, and you just kind of grab from there. Yeah, but it is nice to like, this is everything I need. I have it in this order and boom, boom, boom. What is, what is creating the water? Is it shallots and the leeks and the onions? Is that what's creating the... the what's creating the water is the heat that's making the vegetables release that water. So the water within the vegetables is getting hotter and coming to the uh, evaporation point. Including carrots? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So your question is, why is it that's... Why are the cooking times short on some things that seem like they should cook longer? Okay. Um, the reason for that is I'm cooking at high heat. Okay. And then there's also a point, and I'm just about there. I'm about to show you now. You would think that carrots would need a little bit of more time. Okay. However, I have to make sure, I have to be aware of what's going on with the pot itself. Okay. So I'm about to show you, I'm going to show the camera here. That's what the bottom of the pot looks like. And I'm going to show you ladies. Oh, yeah. Okay. Can everybody see it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, just so I have to be mindful of that as well. Just because I am... No, I, I'm <laughs> just because I know that I can saute without oil does not mean that it's not eventually going to burn if I leave it there long enough. Okay, so now I have managed to brown my carrots in the bottom of the pots, okay? I have concentrated the flavor in the veggies, okay? But now I have carrots, and then I'm going to add some carrot on top of that. Also, 
you have to add all the cooking time. So there's sauteing cooking time, and now there's going to be a simmering cooking time. And then once the broth gets added to that, now there's gonna be a boiling cooking time. So you gotta add all of those together. Okay? So now, what this means is that even though I don't have the ability to use salt, I can go carrot on top of carrot. So I'm doubling up on that carrot flavor. That's what's called, you know, flavor stacking. Okay. That is one of the multiple ways in which I can maximize flavor out of something like this so that when I taste this, they're like, oh wow, this is, you know, a nice intense carrot flavor. Okay. Now, can anybody tell me what I just added to the pot? Wrong. There, I added two things. Okay. Keep going. What kind of flavor? No. You're, it's very simple. Salt? No. What did you say? Carrot. I added carrot flavor. Okay. What's the second ingredient I added? Kind of. What'd you say? Somebody said it. Did you say water? I added water. Okay. So in carrot juice, there is carrot flavor and there is water. Okay. So much like what I was trying to do to the vegetables to evaporate the water out of them, I want to do the exact same thing with the carrot juice. I want to keep the carrot flavor in the pot and I want to get rid of the water because the water doesn't taste like anything. It doesn't do me any favors, okay? So now, this is meant to cook. I'm gonna turn up the heat all the way up. This is now meant to cook until the juice is completely dry, okay? So I'm going to dry this up completely. Make sense? Okay. That is not why I can't use a smoothie. So, if I were to use a smoothie, what would happen is my texture would kind of get thrown off. I would have too much material, too much carrot material. Mm -hmm. Now, that doesn't mean that I couldn't do it. Right. Okay. Um, it just means that I'm doing it a little bit uh, different, and I'm, I'm about. I'm, I will finish that question in okay. just a bit. So that is part of the reason. If I add the smoothie with all the fiber in there, the texture gets thrown off. That's half the answer, and I will get to the other half in a minute. Go ahead. <laughs> so you said if the texture gets thrown off, the taste gonna get thrown off? No, the text would not get thrown off. It would still have a nice carrot punch. Okay. Okay. But the texture would get a little thrown off. Yes? Are there some other soups that would follow the same principle? Um, similar. The, a lot of my soups do follow that sort of same thing, uh, regardless of the sort of order of the steps. I'm constantly thinking I need to get rid of as much water as possible uh, because again, the water doesn't do me any favor. So whether that particular soup, like the mushroom soup, um, that requires the mushrooms to get roasted in the oven first. In the oven, the mushrooms are still being, uh, are still losing uh, water. So they're still, you know, concentrating flavor in there because I'm evaporating the water out of them. If I do it in the pot or in the oven or a combination, uh, it's still the same. You know, how do I get rid of as much water as possible? So whether it's a carrot soup, mushroom, potato, you know, I'm, I'm constantly thinking, how do I get rid of as much water? We're just about ready. So for the camera, you can see how now I can see the bottom of the pot again. Got about 30 seconds or so. And in the meantime, I'm going to explain what I'm about to add. So this is now my vegetable broth. Within this broth, I actually use some of the pulp that we get from our juicer, including the carrot pulp. Okay, so there is carrot in here added to the carrot juice, added to the carrots. Okay. 
So as you see here, I'm getting rid of a flavorless liquid, but now I'm going to add a flavorful liquid. All right, so now that goes in. Once this comes up to a simmer, we'll, let me see, bring to a simmer, 10 minutes, okay. All right, our shuba has been cooking for eight minutes now, and we're just about ready. I'm gonna take a couple more questions from the audience. Yes? Where do we get lime leaves? Where do we get lime leaves? The easiest place would be to go to a Asian supermarket. Uh, so if you have one of those nearby, there are wonderful stores where you can find all sorts of things that you probably haven't seen or used before. Um, I like going in there and if I see something new, I like to grab it and just sort of play with it. Yeah, I know that's kind of scary for some people, like, I don't know what to do with this, but that's the beauty of it. Is it like a bay leaf, put it in there and take it out, or does it take the soup? Um, it's nice and soft. It's not like a bay leaf that's okay. hard. Um, so some people um, will use them for like a soup or a broth, take them out. I like to put it in there and just blend it within the whole thing. Yeah. It is a specific type of lime um, tree leaf, yes. Um, there was one time when I needed one of these and I was out. Uh, and I substituted, I went out to the lemon trees up in the front and I got a couple of the very soft um, leaves from the tips. And it was a good replacement. Not exactly, but, but yeah. Okay, so now let me talk about... Uh, ginger because we're about ready here so the ginger is going to give me uh, the balance for my soup i have a very sweet soup at the moment here now i'm going to add a spicy component with ginger if you cook it for too long you lose it the flavor just sort of dies out that's why i always add it at the very end so that it's got a nice dominant punch to it okay so ginger goes in. Just chunks of it. My lime loaf goes in. Okay. Now I'm gonna give it about 30 seconds. If you don't like ginger, you'd be surprised how pleasant this will actually be. Because there's so much sweetness here with the carrots that you think, God, that's way too much ginger. Okay. By itself, yes. Combined with all the sweetness of those carrots, no. Okay? Because the sweet and the spiciness put together will give you a nice balance of flavor. Okay. So now I put all that in the blender. Make sure I get all my onions in here. And I'll show you what the bottom of the pot looks like. So for those of you who are worried about things sticking and burning. Okay. Lots of options when you're making soup. Some people like, you know, sort of a hearty, chunky, yeah. you know, which would be like, oh, just leave it alone, leave it alone. You know, I want to sort of, quote unquote, be able to chew my soup a little bit as I eat it. Right. Some people are like, no, 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 <laughs> can't do that. I don't want anything getting stuck in my teeth, you know, when I eat the soup. So nice and smooth. <laughs> I don't know if you noticed the color of the soup going in. It was a little bit brighter orange, okay, than it is now. What happens is a, um, <clears throat> excuse me, a Vitamix is a pretty powerful blender. Uh, so as it blends, it actually incorporates some air into the soup, okay? So that's part of why the color sort of thins out a little bit. Um, I can certainly serve this right out of the Vitamix be done. Or I, if, you, if I wanna get that air out and get a little bit more color back to the soup, I would put it back in the pot, cook those air bubbles out, oh, wow. and then I get my color back. Wow. So As I <clears throat> take the lid off, I smell the ginger. It's very sort of predominant. It's almost like, oh my God, I put way too much, okay. But I know that it's gonna be okay because there's a lot of carrot in here. 
Okay. It smells good. <laughs> All right, so let me grab a couple bowls. Okay. So as I serve this guy here, I actually see a lot of uh, little air bubbles there on the top. Okay. Sometimes I garnish this with a little bit of uh, toasted pumpkin seeds. Okay, so I'm thinking the pumpkin seeds are adding a, just a slight crunch to a very soft texture of the soup, okay? And it also adds a um, nutty flavor, which I don't have in here. So for a recipe, whether it's a soup or something else, if you're adding a new ingredient, it should give you something new to the dish, okay? If I suddenly decide, hey, you know, what if I do this little sort of carrot strand and put them in there? They're orange and they're carrot flavored. I already have that in here, okay? So with my toasted says our toasted uh, pumpkin seeds, they're sort of this dark green, crunchy, nutty, none of which are in the soup already. Okay, so everything that the pumpkin seeds bring to the soup, it's all new. Okay, so that's how you know whether an ingredient is a good addition or not. Is it bringing something new to the party? Come on in. Is it not? Go away. We'll save you for something else. Make sense? Yes. Okay. Yes, question. Um, so if you like it crunchy or, you know, if you don't want to blend it as much, then I would think that the ginger might be too chunky. It might be, yeah. So then you'd have to cut it up Chop it up smaller. smaller, yes. Okay. Yes. I left it pretty chunky because I knew that right. I was going to blend it right. nice and smooth. Or you, or you blend half of it. That, that's also yeah. smart, you know, <clears throat> but they didn't get it nice and smooth at the other half and leave that chunky, yes. Well, the lime zest do just as well as yeah. the lime. It, yes, it will. It won't be exactly the same because the lime flavor from the leaf to the lime zest is slightly different, okay? It's not better, it's not worse, it's just slightly different. It will give you the same effect. I just thought of throwing an avocado on the top of it. Just <laughs> Good. Did I did I use any seasonings? No, they were just yeah, dried, plain yeah. pumpkin seeds, roasted in the oven, and then I get a roasted pumpkin seed flavor. How long do you roast the pumpkin seeds? They were in the oven, 350 degrees, about four or five minutes. They don't take long. It's they're fairly quick. Yeah. I usually do it in a pan, so it's not that long. You can do them in a pan but too. It's like in it goes the, very quickly from being roasted to being burned. Being burned, yeah. yeah. In the oven, it's a little bit more even. Okay. Yeah. Yes? And it's kind of related, not to the soup, but to your knife. Where's a good place to, is there a place here in Santa Rosa to buy uh, good knives or what knives do you recommend? There is a um, cutlery place. I would assume that it's now open again. In the mall. It's called Sonoma Cutlery. Okay. Uh, it is a couple blocks away from the mall. It used to be in the mall now, yeah. then they moved it out. Um, so, um, my recommendation for knives, I personally use Mac knives, M-A-C. Um, but how I found out that Mac knives were the ones for me is I went to a cutlery place and asked one of the guys, hey, can you show me some chef's knives? He gave me about six or seven different ones. And how I figured out the Mac was the one is I held them all. Yeah. I grabbed them and I sort of, you know, I, I can't I couldn't cut anything at the at the cutlery place. But I could sort of do the motion and know which knife felt better in my hand. I you Where know. Were they made it? So this is not a Mac, this is one of the ones that I use for my uh, cooking classes. Yeah. So this is a uh, Victoria Knox. Which is also a fairly good um, a knife. Yeah, this one was made in Japan or 
Japanese blades tend to be uh, thinner, which makes them lighter. And if you're using a knife over and over and over and again, something sharp but light makes a lot of sense. So, um, what, uh, I mean, uh, what country do you feel holds the best knives? Germany or? Uh, for me right now, it's, it's the Mac, so they're Japanese. Okay. Yeah. But that doesn't mean that if you grab and you're like, oh, this Henkels feels really good, yeah. then that's the one for you. Okay. It's sort of like going. Uh, matter of fact, I went shoe shopping yesterday. I'm a size 10, and I tried these sort of slip-on shoes in a size 10, and they were too big. So I went down to nine and a half, and I'm like, ah, perfect. Okay, so not all size 10, yeah. or whatever size you are, is gonna fit the same. Mm -hmm. Not every shaved knife is gonna feel right in your hand. If you were to, I, I don't do any cooking. My husband does all the cooking, but he's-, he's <laughs> Okay, gonna, he needs he's to go to the cooking. about his knives. <laughs> But if you, if I were to bring him a gift of some knives, what would be a, a fairly easy This is the best gift you can give your husband. Let him go buy the knives. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> this is the best gift you can give him. Yeah. Say, all right, husband, when you use your knife and chop, take it straight to the sink, wash it, soapy water, rinse it, dry it. Oh, yeah. Put your knife guard on it and put it away. Yeah. Your knife should never go in the dishwasher area, in the sink, mm -hmm. or anywhere else in a drawer full of other stuff mm -hmm. where it's going to be banging around against pots, mm -hmm. pans, plates, other knives, other tools. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's the best gift you can give him. Okay. The knowledge to say, hey, whatever knife you buy, take good care of it. It'll take good care of you. Whether a thirty-dollar knife or a 140, which is what my knife costs, or 500, which there are knives out there that will cost 500 bucks or even more, okay? You can ruin a $500 knife in one day or you can take good care of a $30 knife for a long time and it'll take care of you. There's so. different kinds of knives and size knives, so if you had to pick a basic selection for it's, it's a matter of his hands. Yeah, just okay. Okay. Yeah. Not the, the shape. He has to be the one to. Yeah, I mean, it's different good. kinds of knives for pairing for different things. Uh, I usually use just two kinds: okay. a pairing knife and a chef's knife. That okay. covers 99 percent of what I do. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. What about the hanging them on that metal uh, magnetic strip where you can just hang them on? Or? That's that would be my second choice. Yeah, a, a knife guard is always best. No, knife block is like one of the least. Oh. You can never clean inside of a knife block. Oh. So if you have one, there's a whole bunch of bacteria that's in there that you can never get out. <laughs> oh, interesting. Yeah. So I've served my soup. I'm gonna taste it. The texture is a little thick for me. Okay. So I knew that I should have added all the broth that I brought, but. For whatever reason, I second guess myself. Uh -huh. Oh, yum. Yeah. <laughs> mm -mm -mm. Okay. So, right away is that sweet. It's like, whoa, sweet dessert kind of thing. And it's sort of like a prolonged sweetness, okay? And right before I go, ah, oh, this is just sweet, then it's like ginger, boom, and it's just sort of sweet. And then ginger, it sort of opens it up. Explodes. Okay. It doesn't explode. It's just like sweet ginger. Uh, nice. Okay. And the the onion and the leek in there make it so it's not like sweet ginger done. Okay. So it's sort of a prolonged. It lingers on. Lingers. The yeah. That is what the depth of flavor does. Yeah. That is what the onions and garlic will do for you. Okay. Um, so this was Kara Ginger Soup. I am Chef Bravo. Um, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoy this. I would sincerely uh, hope you give this a try. The combination of the sweetness from the carrot and the spiciness of the ginger is a really wonderful combination. Please hit the subscribe button and thanks for watching.